Picture this. Um, it's 1979. Disco's everywhere. And we've got these two spacecraft Voyager 1 and 2. And they're sending back pictures of Jupiter close up for the very first time. Can you imagine? No internet to just see them, right? People had to wait as these images traveled across the solar system. It's incredible. We're going to take a deep dive into these Voyager discoveries. It really is like going back in time scientifically and seeing Jupiter with new eyes again. Yeah. Back then, everything about space exploration was so new. So we've got these amazing Voyager images. And this first one, it just blows me away. I know. It's Voyager as this tiny speck against Jupiter, this massive swirling sphere. Yeah, it really gives you a sense of scale when you see how small the spacecraft is compared to Jupiter. I mean, Jupiter's huge. How many Earths could fit in there? So Jupiter's so big that you could actually fit over 1,300 Earths inside of it. Wow. Okay, so Jupiter's huge. We get it. It's massive. But even from far away, Voyager still captured Jupiter's clouds in those storms and the bands of color. That's what I think is so cool is that even from that distance, Voyager was able to capture those swirling clouds and storms. And those colors are like what Jupiter's known for, right? right. Those bands are so distinctive. Yeah, it's like somebody, um, like a cosmic painting. Yeah. But we're talking about gases moving around so fast. And look closer, you can see a tiny dark spot on Jupiter. You know what that is? It's Io's shadow. Oh, wow. Io's one of Jupiter's moons and it's casting a shadow. We'll get to that later on. This next image is like a mosaic True. of Jupiter's cloud tops and three of its moons. You can see Europa and Ganymede and Eos in this one too. What strikes me is the detail in those cloud bands. It's really clear here. And each of those bands tells a story. You have those light and dark areas. They're called zones and belts. Yeah. And they're not just staying still. They're constantly moving. Jupiter has a lot of internal heat and it's constantly churning. Like if you had a boiling pot of water. So those lighter zones, those are ammonia clouds. The lighter zones, yeah. Those are cooler ammonia clouds and they're higher up. And then those darker belts are warmer and they're lower and they're made up of other stuff. So Jupiter's more than just a pretty face. I mean, it's really dynamic. Yeah, constantly changing and moving. Yeah, this full disk view of Jupiter really shows off those bands and zones. Look at all those colors. It's hard to believe it's a real planet. Oh, I know. It really does look like Jupiter's showing off a little. So what causes those colors? Well, it's the stuff that makes up those clouds and then how the sunlight hits them. And we can't forget about that giant red spot either. You can see it really well in this image. It's almost like a giant beacon, right? Like, hey, look at me, I am huge. Yeah. But what did Voyager actually tell us about that storm? What did we not know before? It's a great question. We used to think that the great red spot was one of a kind, like the only one. And then these pictures from Voyager showed us all these other storms, and they're all different sizes. Wow, so Jupiter's like a giant storm factory. It really is. It completely changed what we understood about Jupiter's atmosphere and how dynamic it actually is. It's kind of like when you think a band only has one good song, but then oh, you yeah. hear their whole album and you're like, wow, there's a lot more here than I thought. That's a great way to put it. So Jupiter's got a lot going on, but so do its moons, especially Io. This next image shows Io with Jupiter in the background. And wow, it's a colorful moon. It looks nothing like ours. I've always thought it looks kind of like a pizza. Yeah, with all those yellows and oranges. But it's what's under Io's surface that's really wild. Did you know it's the most volcanically active place in our solar system? Can you imagine volcanoes in space? That's nuts. What could cause a moon to be so volcanic? Volcanoes in space? I mean, who knew? Before Voyager sent back these pictures, we had no idea. So what makes a moon so volcanic? Well, it's because of Jupiter. Jupiter's gravity is so strong. Oh, right. Jupiter's huge. Yeah, it's like a tug of war. Jupiter pulls on Io, and all that pulling creates heat inside of Io. That's tidal heating, right? Exactly. So it's like stretching a rubber band. All that friction creates heat. Exactly. And all that heat has to go somewhere. And on Io, it erupts as volcanoes. Then Voyager actually saw these eruptions happening. Oh, yeah. Voyager saw volcanic plumes hundreds of kilometers high. Wow, that's taller than any mountain on Earth. I know, it's incredible. We used to think moons were just kind of boring chunks of rock. But Io proves us wrong. Moons can be active and interesting, too. Io has definitely got a lot going on. Okay, so we've got this pizza moon with volcanoes. What about Jupiter's other moons? There's Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. They're all different. This last Voyager image shows all four moons together. Let's start with Europa. It's the smallest, but it might be the most interesting. What's under all that ice? Well, Europa's covered in ice, but Voyager's pictures and some later missions showed us that there's probably an ocean under all that ice. An ocean, like a liquid water ocean. Yeah, all the ocean. Wow. What's so exciting about an ocean on Europa? 
it could have life. Mm -hmm. Think about it, water, maybe hydrothermal vents and other ingredients for life. Like those vents on the ocean floor here on Earth. Exactly. Those vents support all kinds of crazy life forms. So maybe Europa has aliens swimming around in its ocean. Okay, what about Ganymede? That's a big moon. Ganymede is the biggest moon in our solar system. It's oh, even oh, bigger no. than the planet Mercury. No way. What else is special about Ganymede? It has its own magnetic field. Really? Like a mini Jupiter. Yeah. And it's the only moon we know of that has one. So Ganymede probably has a molten iron core. Yeah. And you know what else? We think Ganymede has an ocean too. Two moons with oceans. This is too cool. We can't leave out Callisto. It's not as flashy as the other moons, but it's still really important. Why is Callisto so special? Callisto's like the solar system's history book. It's covered in craters more than any other object we know of. All those craters tell us about what the solar system was like billions of years ago. It's like looking back in time. Exactly. Callisto could teach us so much about how planets formed and how the solar system evolved. It's amazing how each of these moons is like a puzzle piece, right? They help us understand the bigger picture. They really do. And these discoveries came from two little probes launched back in the 70s. It makes you wonder what else is out there. Oh yeah, it's like we've barely scratched the surface. Like those oceans on Europa and Ganymede, what's down there? Right, could there be life? It's crazy to think there could be alien life swimming around in those oceans while we're here. Man, even if there's no aliens, those oceans can still teach us a lot. Like about how life begins. And if we're alone in the universe, those are some big questions. I know, right? It's amazing how it all started with Voyager, these little explorers that led the way for future missions. It shows how important exploration is. Definitely. Uh -huh. Voyager reminds us to keep asking questions and to keep exploring. It really does. So the next time you're looking at the stars, remember, Voyager's still out there sending back information. Billions of miles away. That's it for our deep dive into Voyager and Jupiter. We hope you enjoyed it, and until next time, keep looking up.